All right, brothers and sisters, I wanted to share something with every one of you out there. Something that I just crossed my mind uh, just a little while ago. I just had to drop what I was doing, and I just felt like I had to do this video right now, and it could not wait. I don't feel this way always about some videos I put off for a while, but I just felt like I had to get this out right now. It was, I want to be real with everybody here for a minute. I want to share something with everybody about myself that I don't really, I've never really talked to anybody about. And it's uh, something about me that it's kind of embarrassing, okay? But I'm just going to be real with everybody and be transparent here. Even though I've been a born-again Christian since I was young, very young, okay? I remember the first day, I remember vividly first day that I trusted on Christ when my father told me the gospel and I believed every word he told me I believed in Jesus Christ and that he died on the cross from all my sins when I was younger okay and I had the peace that passes understanding never once did I think about death and if I if I ever thought about death it was always a happy thought it was like a, a relief like wow I can't wait to die so I can go to heaven and be in heaven for eternity to be with Jesus. Okay. Uh, and then when I got mixed up in false doctrine, I, I was scared to death of death. Okay. I went from not being scared of death at all to having death scare the living crap out of me because I got mixed up in religion. Okay. And that fear of death, the reason I was fearing death is because of what the religious told me. How they told me that if I don't follow these commandments, it doesn't matter if I'm born again or not, I'm going to hell. Okay. And that had always stuck in the back of my mind. And then, of course, you're not you're not you're not learned enough when you're at that age or when whatever I was going through. I wasn't reading the Bible in context, and then they they slam you with all these scriptures out of context. They're proof texts to to prove to you. See, see, this is what happens. This is what happens with a naughty Christian. Okay, and that's stuck in the back of my mind, and it's been a struggle throughout my life even to this day some even to this day you see I'm letting everybody know this about myself this is a personal thing even though I believe on Jesus Christ that he died on the cross for my sins I think it's even to this day see four or five years ago I just started to understand grace again and understanding the gospel okay this is how damaging false doctrine can be. Even to this day, I still have fear sometimes of death. And I'm going to admit it. I will admit it. Okay? Uh, and I know it stems from the false, evil, demonic seed that was planted in me by, by the wicked. Okay? And, it, and even five years ago, five, six, maybe six years ago, I started to finally understand when I got brought to the end of myself, finally get brought back down to the root, to the truth, to grace. Faith alone in Christ alone. Okay. A truth that I understood when I was a child. Before I was taught, you got to keep these commandments. Okay. Even today, sometimes the death thing has scared the crap out of me. But what I do, and, and see, I've prayed to the Lord about this, you know, 
I tell the Lord, I know you died for my sins. Cry, Jesus, I know what you've done, and I know we're eternally secure. Why am I still having these horrible panic attacks? Why am I still having these attacks? When I understand fully the gospel, I understand uh, salvation, forgiveness, sanctification, justification. Okay. Because I, because in the beginning, I had that full assurance. Then I lost my full assurance when I got taught false doctrine. And now I'm getting back that full assurance. But then there's been times, I, I constantly, I think the enemy's favorite thing to do to people is what the enemy knows can get to them. Okay. And that's how damaging false doctrine can be. It's never that I've totally doubted my salvation to the point to where I, I'm convinced that I'm not saved. Never, that's never happened to me. I know that I'm saved. But there's been times that it's been, I don't know, whether a demonic attack or I don't know what. The enemy, the accuser, constantly comes to us. Constantly. And I have realized this over the years. No matter how much you know of the Bible, no matter how grounded in the truth you are, the enemy always tries to chip away at your faith. And the, the only thing that's been able to help me is constantly delving into the Scriptures, constantly memorizing, renewing the mind. And I felt like that's what the Lord has been showing me. My mind needs to severely, has been severely damaged by the false doctrine. Okay. A brainwashing when I was in my, you know, teens. And it takes time. I mean, I'm not saying the Lord can't deliver somebody totally, 100%, boom, there. You know, they don't have a problem with it. I'm saying it takes time a lot of times with things like that. Okay. Because I was always plagued by this thought in my head. Even though I know Christ died for all of my sins. The work, the work is finished on the cross. There's nothing you can do to save yourself or keep yourself saved. Right? There's always a thought that the enemy tries to send, a fiery dart, that says, what if you are wrong? What if you are wrong? That seems to be the fiery dart that the enemy always throws at me. What if you have been duped and what these people are saying is right and what you've been taught this time is wrong? And that's been a thought that's plagued in my mind. Okay. Because eternity is a long time to be wrong. Okay. And it's funny. It's a non sequitur. It's an illogical thought. Because when you read the Bible in context, you see, like this scripture right here, this is just a simplified version of the scripture. It says, I am with you always. Jesus told the disciples, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. But yet the human mind is susceptible to the enemy's attacks of still trying to question that. Okay. Because the Bible says, what does the Bible say? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Okay. That's why we need to renew our minds and constantly delve into the Scripture. But sometimes, it gets to the point to where we stumble, and it, it seems hard to comprehend sometimes, okay, the truth of Jesus Christ. It, it seems, see, but that's the fleshly, carnal uh, carnality look outlook on it because what Jesus said the words he speaks is spirit okay the the uh, the natural man cannot understand the things of God because you know 
Um, yeah, but I just wanted to kind of share that. Uh, even to this day, sometimes the fiery darts of the enemy gets at me with trying to constantly question. Okay, constantly question. Because I'm always... Uh, I'm guilty of always... I overthink things a lot of times. I, I just constantly think about stuff. Just, you know, like you can get lost in thinking about the eternity of God. Like, have you ever just sat down for a second and tried to think, how is God eternal? Has anybody ever just sat down and think of that? Just try to ponder that for a second. How is God eternal? Because ever, you can't, you can't uh, comprehend that. The human carnal brain cannot comprehend eternity. And I think that's when it comes to the point. See, because everything in our life is we see things that led to another, a cause, okay, that led to another thing, and this led to another thing, and this created this, and this leads to this, okay. We, that's how, that's what we see in this world. So that's what our fleshly brain perceives. Everything has a cause. But when you get to God, He has no cause. He is the uncaused cause. He's the unmoved mover. He is the eternal, the almighty. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. Okay? And sometimes I've felt almost loony trying to comprehend eternity in my brain because I'm like, how is God eternal? He is eternal. We know the truth that God is eternal. But it's funny, the human brain can't comprehend that. So that's when it comes to the point to where you just heed the scripture in the Bible. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. And that's something I struggle with a lot. Because God gave us a brain to understand. He gave us logic. The laws of logic. Because God is logical. Because He is logical, we can be logical. Because He gave, He's given us this ability. Because we're made after God's own image. We have a will. We have emotions. Okay, We have a mind. Okay. But I just wanted to share that little thing about myself. Even to this day, even though I know the scriptures, I know them pretty well. I know them enough to understand eternal security and God's love, His everlasting, perfect love for us. That He would go through all that on the cross for us. Like, wasn't it David that said, Who am I that you are mindful of me? It's amazing to think that God cares and loves for us this much that He would put Himself through that on the cross. And it's just unfathomable. Okay. This eternal being that created everything, every speck of, every grain of sand, every atom, every neutron, everything, that He would do that for us. And that's what Satan hates. But I would, I just wanted to share that thing about myself, about the fiery darts of the enemy saying, what if you've got it wrong? What if you were to die today? I don't know if any of you have ever got that thought from the enemy. What if you were to die today and you found out that what you taught was really, what you were taught was really a lie? The enemy tries to spin that. When what we were taught, or what anybody was taught, in a false, illogical, wicked church, that, oh, you can lose your salvation. Oh, if you sin too much. Oh, you're not really saved. Oh, see, the enemy wants you to think that that's true. And wants you to think that eternal security is a lie. Because no matter who you are, and that's why the Bible says, even if the 
the elect were able to be deceived, okay? Because any human being is able to be deceived. That's why there's so many warnings in the New Testament alone about do not be deceived. So it's not that easy and clear cut, clean cut on, oh, if you're really saved, you will never have a doubt in your entire life about your salvation. Okay. That's plum ridiculous. Because it's thoughts that come into our head all the time. That's why Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God. Okay, and notice this, everybody. Putting on the full armor of God doesn't automatically mean you'll never have a problem. You'll never have this or that happen. You'll never have this thought pop in your head. We can't control the thoughts that pop into our head, but the Bible does say take under submission every thought to the obedience of Christ. I'm not really probably quoting that right, but once you get that fiery dart of the enemy, that thought that says, what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong about eternal security? You look at the scriptures. And what do the scriptures say? Since God cannot be illogical, since God cannot contradict, I am with you always. That means no matter how you feel. Like when I was screwed up in the false religion I was getting taught, I always thought that to be forgiven, you must feel forgiven. I would, I would freak out. I would be scared all the time. I would tell people, I, I, I know I'm forgiven, but I don't feel forgiven. And what does that even mean? That's a non sequitur. That's a, that's a false, illogical statement. Feel forgiven? What do you mean, feel forgiven? Forgiveness is something that God has done for you. He has forgiven you, no matter how you feel about it. So that's another example of the illogical feelings, the illogical thinking of man. See, I was caught in, up in that for years, not feeling forgiven. Because you know why, uh, you know, I thought that forgiveness was a feeling. No, it's not about your feelings. It's about what he did for you on the cross. You're forgiven no matter how you feel about it. You believe on Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. Because for a long time, like I've told you, brothers and sisters, a million times, I was trying to base my salvation on how I felt and how good I was doing at the time. And it was all according to my performance in life. And that's a sad, sad, sad way to live. And here I am six, year, six more years down the road. Okay, still fighting that to get that totally out of me to conquer that that those stupid thoughts that pop into the head and that's something I've prayed to the Lord about numerous times you know one of the most the biggest prayers I usually pray it's a short you know little prayer I just pray to the Lord Lord, Lord show me how to trust you more Lord deliver me from this and show me how to trust you more when you get down to it that's what it's about trusting him you know and understanding no matter the thoughts that go in your head if you believe Jesus died for all of your sins you are saved and there's no doubt about that So you can just throw everything out. Throw everything else out. Throw how you're feeling out. Throw It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're feeling. Because I was taught and groomed and brainwashed back in that old church to base your salvation on how you feel. And 
which that is such a destructive, wicked, false belief because it makes millions of people think that they're saved because they feel good. Like if you go to church, oh, you're not feeling good going to church. Oh, you feel great leaving church. Oh, that means you're automatically saved. That means you're automatically fine because you feel good. No, it's one of the most massive deceptions out there. And I was caught up in it. Because our emotional roller coaster is up and down, up and down, because we are fallen beings with the parasite of sin in these bodies that we war against. We don't war against flesh and blood. Against, we war against spirit, principalities. It's a spiritual warfare. And Satan wants to get you caught up in the physical wants to get you caught up in your own reasoning in your own thoughts you know <clears throat> because the enemy knows that we are emotional creatures so that's what he wants to attack us with The emotional salvation gospel. Because you feel good, that means you're saved. No, it does not. And I think that's what the Lord is showing and teaching all of us. It has to do with the truth of Scripture. And nothing else. It has to do with Jesus Christ. And what he has finished on the cross. Well, we're going to have to understand that. And no matter how mature you are in the Lord. No matter how many years you've been saved. You can never get enough of the gospel. You can never get enough of the truth. Of the simple fact that no matter what happens. If you believe the gospel you are secure. Because according to God's Word, it's not entered into the heart of man what the Lord has in store for those that love Him. So what Jesus says, so where I am, you may be also. He's went to prepare a place for him. So all these feelings we're feeling, this emotional roller coaster, all this wickedness down here, all this crazy sin-stained travesty we have down here in the blink of an eye when to be separated from the body, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And the deception in our bodies is, oh, you don't feel good, you don't feel good, you don't feel saved, oh, that means you're not saved. That's a load of crap that I had to get over. And I was fall, I was so deceived by that. But we know the truth. Jesus said He's with us always. Yeah, He was talking to the disciples when He said that. But that scripture goes for every born again child of God. It doesn't just go for the disciples. Any born again child of God, Christ is with us always. No matter what you're going through. And 99% of the time, if you are feeling down, feeling like crap, it's just the sinful, it's just the power of sin, it's this realm we live in is a constant attack on the born again child of God. You see, because the unsaved, they don't have to deal with this battle. They don't have to deal with this. They, they, they don't care. They don't have anything attacking them. They're already, they're already gone. Satan's already got them. In, they're already, the Bible says they're already a child of Satan. So it's the born-again children of God that have this struggle. That is a testament to your salvation. Why would you even be having this struggle if you were not saved? 
See, that shows, that breaks through the illogical crap of the devil anyways. He tries to come to you and say, oh, what if you got it wrong? What if you are unsaved? What if you blah, 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 blah? And see, why would he even be attacking you if you were not saved? See, that's the stupidity. But see, the, there's a part of you that wants to get deceived by that. That's the fleshly part. But then when you sit down for a second and examine what's going on, you see that by the truth of God's Word, that's a load of crap. Those illogical, wicked thoughts like that, they're loads of crap. That's why we are attacked 24-7. And I'm not saying everything that you go through in this life is automatically an attack from the devil. I'm not saying that. I'm just... These wicked thoughts that go contrary to God's Word are attacks from the devil. They can be attacks from nothing else but the devil. When you have a person telling you, no, that's not true, eternal security is not true, that is, attack from Sa that is an attack from Satan. I'm not saying the person that's telling you that, oh, they're automatically possessed. I'm just saying that Satan could be uh, influencing them to tell you that. Anything that goes against God's word is an attack of Satan. Yeah, the person that could be telling you that could just be deceived. They, they, they could not necessarily just be purposely trying to lie to you. They could be deceived and be being used as an instrument by the enemy. Because that's what the Bible says. Satan is the father of lies. So, I'm going to end this video, guys. I just wanted to kind of talk about that, that personal struggle that I've always, well, not always had in my life, but ever since I got deceived by false doctrine years ago, that's one of the biggest, biggest hurdles for me is the what-ifs, the what-if thoughts. Every one of those what-if thoughts need to be shot down by Scripture immediately when they come into your brain. Because we know, what do we know? What do we know? Brothers and sisters, we know the truth of God's Word. There can be no contradiction in it. So if you have a simple statement that says, I am with you always, that means He is with you always. So the what if is just a fart in the wind, okay? It's just crap. But if you've been neglecting your relationship with the Lord or anything like that, and not been studying to show yourself approved and not been delving into the Word like the Lord wants us to, you are more easily susceptible to attacks like that. And it can, you know, I, that's what I find myself. Uh, when I get too much into this world and I don't just delve into the Scriptures, and I start thinking, you know, overthinking things, it gets to the point to where, you know, I gotta come back, get grounded back in the Word, and read what the truth says, because you can never have enough of the truth. But I just wanted to share that about myself, guys. Uh, God bless everybody, and I guess uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is... Salvation is not has nothing to do with how you feel. Okay? Here's, here's another truth. You could be scared to death on your deathbed. Okay? You could have trusted the gospel years ago. Okay? Trusted Jesus Christ. Saved, born again. You could be on your deathbed, scared to, scared to death of death. But does that mean you're unsaved? No, it does not mean you're unsaved. That means that you have an illogical, false belief in your head. Okay? But because you feel that way, does that mean you're unsaved? No. The fact that you're, a person would even be worried about that is a testament. can be an testament to somebody's salvation. Because you know the truth. You know there is a life after this life. You know that the Bible says there is a heaven, there is a hell. Okay? You know the truth. And for us that are saved, 
we do not have to worry about these things. But if you are worrying about these things like I have before, if you are worrying about them, that has nothing to do with your salvation. It just means that you need to keep studying, keep delving into the Word, ask the Lord for wisdom, it says in the book of James, and He will give it to you. Try to grow close to the Lord as you can. Okay? Just think about Jesus. Just, just dwell on Jesus. Dwell on His promises. Okay? Just like a woman caught in adultery. He who is without sin cast the first stone. Nobody can cast a stone. That shows the idiots right there. The ones that say, oh, you've got to not sin or you're going to hell. Jesus said, cast the first stone who's without sin. Nobody could cast a stone. So why do they think they can cast stones? Because they're illogical people that do not understand the scripture. They are self-righteous people. Well, for the third time, I want to try to end this video, everybody. God bless everyone, and everyone have a great evening.